Os. Os. Come on, Genki Deska, hope you are Genki Des, hope you are well. Uh, good evening, welcome to the dojo on Thursday evening. Um, I'm not going to lie, I've just put my contact lenses in about 10 seconds ago, so I can't see anything at the moment, whilst they just ever so slightly adjust. Um, rushing around and trying to get prepared uh, for this evening's lesson. Uh, so my apologies for, for what appears to be a rush, because it is us. Uh, good evening, so welcome to Thursday evening. Um, I'm just trying a slightly new setup this evening, um, which I'm sort of not happy with. You're not kind of very straight, but hey, I think that's a little bit better. Hey, us. Uh, gonna try, gonna try and do a us evening curl. Um, so just gonna try and do some more kicks this evening. So we're gonna look at, uh, in particular, Yoko Geri Kiyagi and Yoko Geri Kikomi. Okay, so side snap kick and side thrust kicks, and, and most importantly, the difference between the two. Uh, so if you're with us on Tuesday, uh, we did Maigiri, uh, front snap kick, and we did uh, Mawashi Giri, so roundhouse kick. Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll continue with the kicks this evening, and uh, then obviously something different next week. Um, so that's that's the plan for this evening. Uh, Basically, on Tuesday, I kind of did more my Gary and a little bit of more Shi Gary. Um, so tonight, I'm trying to try and get a balance between the two because I think both these kicks are um, equally as important as one another, but also equally as difficult to perform and practice. Okay, and I've just got some ideas and tips that I think will help people get these um, uh, these kicks a little bit better. But please always think about your kicks in terms of your own physical ability. Okay, always challenge yourself to try and be that little bit better but also be mindful of you and you as a person. Um, when I was younger, I could kick up here, and now I'm older, I can kick here, or some days here. It depends. So um, I, I, I think it's important not to put too much pressure on yourself to think I must kick Joe Dan in the dojo and you're 65 years old. You know, that's not always going to be possible. So um, please don't think that you have to do that. So what I want you to do is just go at your level, okay? I'll go at my level uh, this evening, okay? So uh, mine might not be Joe Dan, we'll see. Okay, and in fact, both these kicks have done better to Dan, I think, anyway. So what we'll do, as usual, we'll say hello to a few people. Um, I'm able to see the screen now at this height. This is good. Um, hopefully, it's all going to be good for you to be able to see me. Uh, so good evening, us. Harry Sun, uh, no, I still don't have my Lego piece yet, Harry, but good news. Uh, Lego have contacted me and said that the piece is on its way, but it could be up to 14 days. Uh, I've ordered another piece from somewhere else in Europe. Believe it or not, you can't get it anywhere in England. Um, so I'm hoping within the next few days I should get my piece to complete my Lego set. Trust me, as soon as I get it, I'm going to build it. Uh, good evening, Harry and Caleb. Uh, hope you are both okay, us. Um, have you been watching The Mandalorian? Are you able to? I have um, been watching that on Disney Plus and absolutely love it on series two now. Really enjoying it. Good evening, Andy Sensei, Kombonwa. Uh, good evening, Tim Sensei. Good evening, Carl. And good evening, Kayla. Hi, Kayla. How are you? Hope you are well. Hope you're doing okay. And I uh, hope you are. Um, just great, basically, just great. So uh, tonight's lesson then, we'll do a quick warm up, mainly warm up and uh, focusing on the legs more than the upper body. Um, and you'll notice I've got my trusty steed with me, okay, because your uh, chair in your dojo is always helpful. I'm gonna move that at some point, so I will end up kicking it, I'm sure. So let's just stand about to think to start, and wait, Whoops. Okay, just relax, warm up are the arms, each, knee, sun, shi, go, rok, sich, hot, ko, jo, and backwards, each, knee, sun, shi, go, rok, sich, hot, ko, jo, and left arm forward, right arm back, each, knee, sun, shi, go, rok, sich, hot, ko, jo, and change each, Ni san shi go ro sich ha ko jo. Okay, I'm stretching each ni san shi go ro sich ha ko jo. Okay, arms forwards each ni san shi go ro sich ha ko jo. And to the sides each ni san shi go ro sich ha ko jo. And up each ni san shi go ro sich and forward to the side and up. Ich, ni, san, shi, go, rok, si, ch, ha, ch, 
cool and dual. Okay, and relax. Just stretching your right arm forwards. And the other side. Very, very good. Okay, pull down. And pull down. Okay, so just relax your body, bring your shoulder blades in. And relax. And again. And relax. Okay, bring your shoulders down, your shoulders down, and pull your head up. Okay, so you elongate the neck. Elongate the neck. Relax. And again, relax. And again, relax. Okay, those two stretches, my chiropractor helped me sort out my neck. Very stiff neck as well as a bad back. Um, <clears throat> so, Zin Kutsudachi, thumb starts. Okay, go nice and low. Nice and low. Stretch your gastrocnemius, your calf muscle, okay, which is the muscle group here, and your hamstring here. Really give it a good stretch. And twist the other way, again, get, go down, get low, give it a nice stretch. <clears throat> Back to the front on the ball of the foot, push up, drop the hips down. Just stretches the back, stretches the legs as well. Change the other side. Okay, feet twice, shoulder width apart. Okay, just stretching down. So just being, keep your back straight, but just change your hips. Hands to the floor, push back, stretching. Head over to the left knee. And across the right knee. Back down to the centre. Relax the legs. Stretching again, a little bit wider. Okay, sitting on the floor. My floor is freezing, I hope yours is a bit warmer. Okay, grab your toes if you can. And just pull your feet up. And relax. Okay, again. Grab the toes, pull up, bend the elbows if you can. Okay, good feet together. So I haven't had a back injury. I can tell my flexibility is nothing like it was uh, prior to the back injury. So <clears throat> when you have an injury like so, you need to take time, look after yourself, don't go too much too soon. <clears throat> if like me, you speak to a professional, okay, who hopefully is going to help you correct the injury or the issue then listen to their advice. If you're paying for their advice in particular, definitely listen to it. Okay, so left foot out, right foot across the left foot, left elbow to the right knee, twist behind, and change legs, left leg over the right knee, right elbow to the left knee, and twisting. Okay, just get shake the legs, straighten these knees. Let's go. Show me, ready? Sensei, ready, boss. Boss. So, Kiyagi Kikomi, okay? Yo ko geri Kiyagi, yo ko geri Kikomi. So, Kiyagi means uh, literally snap, okay? Kikomi literally means thrust. So there's very much a difference between the two here, okay? And what we uh, are intending this evening is to demonstrate the difference between the two and hopefully help you with this kick, or these kicks, sorry, both kicks. Um, I think when I was much younger, these kicks were not challenging at all. But then again, I would question, was I even doing them correctly? I, I would question that. Um, uh, but, but they certainly felt very easy to do. Super flexible I was, I used to be able to do the front splits at least. And I never had any issues kicking Kiyagi Jodan or even Kikomi Jodan or indeed any other kick Jodan. However, as I've been doing training now for over 30 years, my kicks have come down. But technique, technique sometimes I think improves actually. Um, and now I realize that kicking up there isn't necessary anymore. Okay, so we have to kind of um, uh, 
make our own judgment as to where we're going to kick. So tonight we're kicking Chudan because I personally believe that both these kicks are really super effective if done Chudan, okay? And uh, so Chudan is around this area of your body, so just above the belt but below the neck. Oops. Okay, so that's where your, your kick kind of high is at the moment. But you go to where you feel comfortable, okay? So if that happens to be knee height, then that's absolutely fine. Oops. Thing to do is to always challenge yourself. So idomu in Japanese, uh, idomu, I think that's how you pronounce it, means challenge. If you don't challenge yourself, then you can never expect to get better, okay? You should always try and push yourself if, as much as you possibly can. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start with Yoko Geri Kiyagi, and then we we'll move to Yoko Geri Kikomi, okay? I don't know why I always do Kiyagi with my left hand and Kikomi with my right side, I have no idea, but that's just the way that Sensei Scoot does it. Okay, first of all though, let's just work on our balance, okay? Because this is gonna be really important for this evening's lesson. Um, and I'm just gonna expand my screen, so I just suddenly realized you're a lot, I'm a lot smaller than I need to be, and I can now see. Okay, so first of all, same as Tuesday, but Haisukudachi, so Kyotsuke. Okay, so Haisukudachi Shizentai stance. Okay, and what I want you to do is to bring your knee up to the body, similar to the Maigeri kick. Okay, and keep it tight into the body here. Okay, then bring your knee up higher, higher, and higher. Now, if you find a wobble is happening, your supporting leg, bend that slightly. That your hips drop down, okay, so they sink down. So if I show you this angle here, so same thing, let your body just stand naturally, okay, that your hips drop, so your knees don't bend as such, you don't force them down, you just take the weight out of them, so you just let your hips drop down. So I guess your knees slightly bend, but you're not forcing them, it's a natural thing, a natural thing, okay. Take your right knee up, higher, higher, and higher. So you get as comfortable as you can, okay, and then take the foot back down. And again, both sides, working on both sides. Oh, excuse me, the dog needs to come out. For those of you who are not used to my dojo, Holly, that's right. Holly Sun. Holly Sun Ao Shih Tzu often makes an appearance and often annoys me, uh, particularly when I'm trying to train. Okay, so now back to High Sugadachi Shih and Tai stance. Okay, and take your left knee up. So keep it tight to the body, sit down on the supporting leg, bring your knee up higher, 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 and higher. Okay, keep control of it. If you're wobbling, then push, bend this down. Okay, but just let your hips drop. Shoom, like that. Okay. And down. Okay, take your right knee up. And sink down. You see how much more control you've got once you've sat, sat down. Not sat down, but sank down, yeah? So if I stand straight upright, bring my knee up, you can see straight away balance is compromised. So the key thing is to support the legs, let the hips drop, yeah? Remember, we're not bending the knees, we're just dropping the knees. Okay, bring the knee up. More control straight away. More control straight away. If you find you bring your knee up too high, yeah? And you start to lose your balance, bend the supporting leg. Okay, and try to keep as much as you can on the access point. Okay, so bring your right knee up, each, eight left knee, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hatch, go, I do. Okay, relax. Okay, so to do these kicks, we're going to do them for my Shizentai stance to start with, okay? And then we'll do them in uh, Kibidachi as well. So there's two ways of doing this. One is probably the best way to learn from the Kihon perspective, basic. And the second one is the way that you would do these in your Kion uh, as part of your syllabus, your grading, okay? Or indeed, if you're um, training, etc. These kicks, uh, both of them are used within um, our kata, okay? So depending upon what kata you might choose, your Kagi Kikomis, um, uh, are in katas, and do they get used in kumite? Yes, they do. Okay, so you can use both these kids, uh, kicks, kids, kicks um, in, in your kumite, definitely. Okay, so kiyagi, geri, kikomi, geri are used in our kionepon kumite sets, our jukpon kumite sets, and we use them in jukumite, okay, as kicking techniques as well. So very versatile, very versatile, but very different, and that's what we're going to do this evening. So what I'm going to do is get my 
Brian. Now, for those of you that have trained with me for a long time, you'll know who Brian is. Brian is my dojo helper, okay? And um, I've been training for 30 years, and I don't believe ever taught anybody called Brian. We came up with that name some time ago, probably about 20 years ago. So, um, Brian, your friend, your chair, your sideboard, whatever you have to help you, this will help you understand your call Gary Kiyagi, your call Gary Kikomi. And what we're going to do is remove the element of balance to start with, because I think we need to focus on something else. So, I need to make sure that I stay in shot. So, as we take the knee up, okay, for Mai Gary. Now, Mai Gary, we know what this is, a snap kick to the front. We did this on Tuesday. Mai Gary, the hip and the knee are kicking straight to the direction that we want to travel, okay? That's Mai Gary. Kiyagi Gary. So Kiyagi Gary, excuse me, I knew Holly would do that. I was just waiting for her. Us. Us. She can see I'm not giving her food tonight, so she's not gonna hang around. So Kiyagi Gary, if we wish him to kick to the side, which is what we want to do, okay, we need to bring the knee into a different position. So the best way to do this is use your apparatus, okay, your chair, your sideboard, your Brian, your partner, whatever you want to do. If you've got a great Dane, big dog, they can do that. You can't do it with a Shih Tzu. So bring the knee up here, but the knee needs to be pointing to the direction of travel of the kick. Okay, I didn't explain that very well. So the knee is gonna point in the direction here. But the foot still needs to come up the same as my Gary. The foot still needs to come up the same as my Gary. Are you going to watch from there, are you? Don't go on the chair. Please don't jump on the chair. So from here, here. And the foot is sort of resting on the knee area. So if you use the sole of the foot, okay, you can kind of just sit that onto the, on the side of the kneecap, okay? Gives you an idea. Now the kick itself, the kick itself is coming from the side, okay? And you'll get here, and this is where, for me in particular, tight around the hip area, or oh, pulls your buttocks here. And this is where you have to slightly change, or I certainly have to change, and it again depends upon how flexible you are. When I was younger, my legs used to do that, and now I'm older, it does not do that. So from here, I am gonna, change my hip, okay? Now, I, I remember training in Japan in uh, 2004, a long time ago, Suzuki Sensei, and he was teaching us to use what I understood as Mawashi hip. So Mawashi Gary, which we did on Tuesday, roundhouse kick, we use our hips. This is not Mawashi in any way, but, but what, what I think he meant was that you must rotate your hips similar, similar to Mawashi Gary, not the same, not quite the same, but similar. So I consider this to be the hip. So the knee comes up, and as the foot comes out, we're kicking with the edge of the foot, okay? So here to here, here to here. So we're kicking with the edge of the foot. Now the edge of the foot, we're talking the outer edge, the soccer toe. Sokoto, okay, the outer edge of the foot. Uh, this is more difficult, by the way, from Shizantai, uh, much easier in kie, uh, Kibirachi, which we do later. In karate, we always do the hard things first, okay? Knee up, make sure the knee is correct, okay? And start at a lower level. Remember, this is your, this is your crutch, this is your rock for help supporting you. Forget about your balance at the moment. Try to keep as upright as possible, okay? Kick and back down. Okay, so remember your supporting leg, let your hips drop. Knee up, kick back, and down. Knee up, kick back, and down. Now as your body warms up, which mine is starting to now, okay, the kicks become easier. So um, we didn't do a proper warm up, and I haven't had time to do a proper warm up. So if you are a little bit sort of um, uh, stiff around this sort of area, around your pelvis area, around your hips and everything, then, then warm up properly, okay, and things will be um, a little bit better for you. But otherwise, just take your time. There's no hurry in karate. So here, back down. Here, back down. 
Okay, I think you can still see my foot. I can't actually see with myself properly. So uh, my apologies. So the knee comes up along the side here. Sorry, the knee, I mean the foot. Foot slides up to the knee. Okay, the foot comes here. Bring here. And at this point, hip. Now, as I say, you may not need to do that hip. Okay, I have plenty of karate friends that don't need to use their hip in the way that I do. Um, I think it's a personal thing. Uh, I found that that has really helped my Kiyaki Geri still maintain their form and their speed and power uh, in Kibidachi in particular, and help me doing this. If I don't move my hip, my kicks are very much lower. Okay, very much lower. And that's just an age thing potentially, I don't know. Okay, or potentially a technique thing. But from here, I know that I can get my leg up if I need to by doing this correctly. Try not to lean on this too much now. In fact, let's move it away. Still see if I can fit into the camera frame. So, here, this position here, Kiyagi Geri, back and down. Try to keep the balance. Knee up, kick, back down. Knee up, kick back and down. It's not as easy as it looks, and it certainly doesn't feel easy. But the more you practice, the better it gets, undoubtedly. So changing sides, making sure that I don't kick the dog sped. Knee up to the side. Again, let the supporting leg sit down. Kick back and down. Use the, use the chair, knee up. Now I was always taught to put my big toe up. Try and get this in the correct angle. That is not the correct angle. Big toe up. Okay. Now my sensei always taught me to do that because, quite rightly, he's correct. When you use your hip, it brings the edge of the foot nice and horizontal, or definitely helps, I think, improve it. So big toe, your big toe comes up, your other toes just stay flat, they don't go down. Okay, so big toe up. And then you are definitely kicking with the edge of the foot. Kicking with the edge of the foot. Okay, so that's that's what we're aiming for. This is like a cutting kick. Okay, so um, in terms of where would you strike with this kick, here is a really good place. Okay, a good place to strike is the floating rib area. You can definitely come here underneath the throat, again, which is also a very good place to strike with this kick. You can do Kiyagi Geri here, but if you were, if I was you, I'd do Kikomi there. I wouldn't do Kiyagi necessarily here. Okay, but that's a, again, personal thing. So back to our position. Okay, so looking where we're going, knee up into position here, kick back and down. Try to get the foot horizontal. If you find the foot is creeping up, you are possibly not using the hip correctly, or you are over kicking too far, too soon, and so therefore you're losing your form. So better, yeah, and I'm looking to see if that's horizontal and that was good, so the big toe was up, comfortable for me to do, happiness, move forwards, try to improve, try to better, etc. So kicking again. So don't bring your foot out. Don't, if you do this, you lose control of this straight away. Okay, so here, keep it tight to the body, like so. Okay, I hope that uh, makes sense. So looking, your knees, remember traveling direction of the uh, kick where you want it to go, okay, and hip. Hip, hip. So you're just rotating the hip. This from here to here. So it's just the hip, not, not the rest of the body. The torso doesn't need to move. Okay, it's just the hips that will help you control that particular area. Um, excellent tip on the Kiyagi hip. Yes, Tim, for us too, definitely. <laughs> It's the best thing I think I was ever taught in karate, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Uh, when I first went to Japan, I was 34 and starting to slow down and seize up. Um, <laughs> and uh, I definitely think it really, really helped me, okay? Um, you're not uh, pivoting on the supporting foot, 
okay? You're not, you're not twisting the foot. So you're, you're supporting next stage where it is. Kikomi Gary, we do pivot, but not on Kiagi Gary. Uh, I'm sorry if I've misread that question because it's blurry for me. So here, sit down, support, kick, back, down. Take the, ooh, take the chair away, shizen tie, let your hips drop. Remember your hips drop, not your knees. Don't force your knees down like this. This is not good form. Okay, just let your hips drop, hips drop. Knee up, kick back, down. Okay, if you want to use your arms to help you, to help your balance, that's a really good idea. So from this position here, kick Kiyagi back, eight and down. And then look the other side, Kiyagi Gary, and back down. And then the other side, and back down. And the other side, and back down. Warming up, warming up. Oops. Okay, so you call Gary Kiyagi from Shizentai, from Natural Stance. Uh, when we're in the dojo, it's really good to partner up and hold your partner's arm, okay? Uh, we usually sort of grip, grip each other's wrists like so, okay? Obviously, we haven't done that for a long while, and we maybe won't be doing it for a long while. But here, so imagine your partner there, and what you would do is you look at each other and you smile a lot when you do this. It's a lot of fun. Okay, if you're really horrible and you cheat, you get to this position, you pull them forward, kiagi gary them, and then come down. That's really mean, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, what you should try to do though is to look at them, okay, to keep your form, that's your target. Look at your target, bring your knee up, kick, and come back down. Now, top tip. This is not a secret. This is a bow. This is a very bad bow, but this is a bow. Now, how bad am I? There's my partner. Look at my partner. Bring my leg up. See the lean. Puss. You need to try to let your hips drop. Look at your partner. Get your knee. And less lean. Not bow. Okay, so keeping your form as much as you can. A hip drop here, knee up. <clears throat> difficult to do, but we must practice the difficult things in karate. Otherwise, we don't just get better. So, I got told off for that in Japan. Last time I went, not the first time I went in 2004, but in 2016, Takuno Sensei said to me, you're leaning forwards, and he was quite right, I was leaning forwards. Uh, my partner was bigger than me, and uh, I was really struggling with my right knee, if I'm honest, uh, my surgery uh, that I'd had on it, and I was in a lot of pain, significant pain, and uh, he said, you're leaning forwards. But what he made me do is actually think that that was a bad, bad form, bad form. Okay, so ever since, trying to correct that. So they're not leaning forwards, not leaning sideways, tilting too much. Try to keep in everything as, much, as good as possible, okay? Practice makes better. Practice makes better, not perfect. We don't do perfect in our dojos. We're all human beings. Um, uh, somebody out there will know they have a much better Kiyagi Gary than me. I might have a better Morshi Gary than them. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Don't worry about other people. Only worry about yourself. Only think about yourself and your own karate. Okay. Look at other people to learn from. Absolutely. But don't try to be them. Be yourself. Be your better self always. My students will tell you that I say this every single week. Always look to better yourself. Okay. So I think that's really, really important. So we're going to move the chair out of the way. Otherwise, this will be painful. Okay, so you'll call Gary Kiyagi in side stance. Now, you, you will need a bit of room. Uh, you're probably going to need at least two meters. Okay, so my suggestion is that you start on one side of your dojo in Kibidachi. Okay, and you're going to step cross and kick. And so you need to make sure you have room to kick. Okay, likewise, when you go back, 
make sure you have room to kick the other side. Now, again, don't go above Chudan unless you really want to, okay? It makes you happy. Just go um, uh, to, to Chudan, Jodan if you want to, if you have to. Oops. Um, showing off is great, why not, I suppose. Oops. Okay, so Yoi, Shizentai, Hachidachi stance, okay? And then changing to Kibidachi. Okay, so your Kibidachi, remember your knees should be facing forwards, natural position, forcing them out, just stretch your knees over a period of time, and I'm a good example of that, okay? So just this position here. Now your hands or your arms, if you have them forwards, you're leaning forwards, okay? You're gonna naturally do this, lean forwards. Better to put them behind your bottom, okay, behind your hip line, behind here, okay, straightens the back. If you put them here, you, you, you lean forward naturally, okay? So back into your Kibidachi stance, okay? Hands the back here, half a step across, okay? So Kozadachi stance, cross leg stance. So from Kibidachi to cross leg stance. But remember, this is just a transitional move. We're not staying in Kozadachi, okay? So you're just sliding the foot across. Try not to come up and down. So just relax the stance, arms behind, come across here, bring the knee up, kick Yangi, and then back down to Kibirachi. And I know what you're saying, Sensei Scoot, that is so much easier. That's because it is. So again, look into where you're going, Kozadachi stance, bring the knee up, kick back and down. Now it's really important that you bring that leg back, back down into the hip, uh, into the, towards the center to put it down. Because to me, that means you've maintained control of your technique, okay, and you understand the kick. So the snap kick, the kagigeri, you are doing this. Bang, it is literally an explosion, okay? It's a short, sharp shock, a little bit like a very fast yakazuki. So kagigeri is bang. Okay, an electric shock. That's the best way I tell people. Um, imagine a bolt of lightning coming down from heaven to hit you, and bang, that's it. That's the kiyakigiri. It's a short, sharp snap, snap. So foot back, snap, and here. Snap, snap, hus. Okay, so you get the idea. So you want the power to go in and away immediately. Okay, and what will happen is the person or the product of what you hit, boom, Go straight down, same as if you're struck by lightning. If you're struck by lightning, very rarely do, apart from in the movies, you get thrown 100 feet away, get hit by lightning in reality, boom, straight down, that's it. So Kiyagi Gary, think of it as a bolt of lightning. So back into Kibidachi starts, okay? Uh, high grades, you can do your Kamai uh, position here, I say, so it's a little bit more uh, comfortable for you. Juniors, a hand here for balance, okay? So I'll do one of both, uh, one of either, uh, one of each, even. So we're looking to where we're going, step across here, kick, Kiyagigeri, and come back. Change position, step across, Kiyagigeri, and back. Okay, now you can probably tell that for me, I'm getting more height easy, uh, much easier for me than being in this position, okay? I find kicks from, from the Shizentai stance of Haisukadachi particularly difficult. Okay, when I very first went to Germany to train with the Kita Center uh, in his dojo, uh, we did a lot of Kiyagi Geris to the front and Kikomi Geris to the front and Mawashi Geris to the front from Shizentai starts. I find that very, very challenging for this area around my pelvis in particular. Okay, and um, that takes me back to when I was in my early 20s doing karate and uh, learning those kicks for the first time and I felt the same sort of pain. So I find that very, very difficult to do. I find this much easier, much easier to do. So once more, Yoko Geri Kiyagi to the left, each. Hey, a more tay turn and kicking the other side. Knee. And more tay turn and each. And more tay turn, ish. Okay, just check your stance that you're sitting down naturally and your may. Awesome. I can kick Joe down comfortably from Kibidachi. I can't do it from Shizentai. I don't know why I've been practicing it for years, trying to get better and better, but it's, uh, I, I feel better in a, in a side stance, okay? Big toe up, brings the edge of the foot round. Lovely, lovely side angle of the foot. 
Um, when you see people do this and they get photographed in particular, uh, this is a beautiful looking kick, okay? Really good if you're uh, doing posy stuff, okay? Um, which I've done in the past. My son took some amazing photographs of me in Bali a couple of years ago, and they truly are beautiful. Um, he's made me, a very old man, look very good. Um, the technique was okay as well, but I must admit it was uh, about 90% humidity and 42 degrees. So I was warmed up, it was lovely. And I train like that in the summer anyway. So it's really, really, really important, okay, that you see the beauty in this kick. It looks and feels great when done properly. Itch, Itch, Again, itch, Pay more play, itch, Hey, I'm ready. So, think of Kiagi, bam, fast explosion, just like a thunderbolt. We move on. The old Gulberry Kekomi. So we start in the same position that we started at the beginning of the lesson with the old Gulberry Kiagi, okay? And we're back into Shizentai, just to make our body work that little bit harder. But more importantly, to understand the start of this kick. So we said at the beginning of the lesson, may Gary, keep to the front, come back down, okay? Keep it into the body, control. Your knee, the position of your knee, if it's here, your, your balance is really gonna be compromised all the time. I said this on Tuesday, but just to recap, this is, this is bad, okay? Bring your knee in here and drop your hip down and you have much more control over this part of the body and you see the wobble's gone and you have much more control. So, Kiyagi Gary, let the hips drop. Okay. <laughs> Hi, son, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hello, hello, welcome to the dojo. It's Thursday, could you now move? I need to kick. Is that okay? You smell as well, you smell a lot. Not nice. Yeah, you stink. So, she stinks. Dog breath. Okay, so, Kiyagi Gary, here. Keeping it tight to the body, us. Kikomi Gary. Same as May Gary. Exactly the same as May Gary. Keeping it into the body, keeping the heel just above the knee, okay, here. Then the difference between Kiyagi and Kiyagi, the foot turns and we use the hip. Here, we use not just the hip, but we also use the right foot, if you can see it on the floor there, okay, and we pivot, we pivot. And what I try to think of with this is that when I, I remember Matsuda Sensei always saying to me, you punch with your elbow, okay, in terms of the direction of travel of the punch. Um, with with uh, some of the kicks, you should say you kick with the knee, okay? But actually with Kikomi Gary, and I think also Yushira Gary, which is back kick, which we're not doing this evening because uh, of time, you're using your hip, okay? So the knee comes up here like my Gary, you pivot, the hip is now where I want the direction of the kick to go. And then literally, the kick is thrust out, not snapped, thrust. Knee up, pivot. You can see my foot stuck to this floor, unfortunately. Kick, back, and down. Use this, use this to help you understand the basic part of the kick. That's what it's there for. Don't worry about leaning, don't worry about using it as a crutch, okay? It's there to support you. What I want to do, first of all, is get this feeling of knee up, push, and back. Now, when you do this kick really well, okay, and uh, certainly Andy Sensei, um, uh, one of my senior instructors, does this very well, okay, you get this nice pop, okay, you get this lovely sound if you do this kick really, really good. Now, I've done it a number of times, actually, more times than I care to remember, but, but he's very good at it, okay. So here, push up, back, and down. Here, push up, back, and down. And you're kicking with the heel. The heel of the foot. Okay, the outer edge of the heel. Not the side of the foot, the edge of the heel. So you are pushing your opponent away with the heel of the foot. 
the heel of the foot, uh, Kakato, Kakato. So again, hips down, looking, position, and back. Knee up, back. Knee up. Okay, change. So again, think, relax. Not your shoulders, just relax your hips. Let your hips sink down. Knee up. Yeah, keep it into the body. Keep control of it. Keep it into the body. Keep control of it. Yeah, it's as high as you want to go, comfortably, but keep control of it. Straight away, you lose balance, okay? Because you're, you're allowing this large, big limb, as we said on Tuesday, to come away from the body. Once it comes away from the body, you've started to lose control of it. So, looking, knee up, pivot, kick, edge of the foot, back down to here. You, use your apparatus, your chair, your sideboard, your Great Dane, your Shetland pony, whatever you're using is your partner. Not knee out, knee forwards. The same as my Gary. Pivot, push the hip, thrust the kick, back down. I think the chair's getting in my way. <laughs> I'll do it once more with the chair, and then we'll get rid of the chair, because the chair's getting me annoyed. So, knee up, back down. Knee up, push the heel. Knee up. Push with the heel. Okay, enough of the chair. Okay. So, keep calling me, Gary. To the side. Keep calling me, Gary, to the side. So, I tilt. I tilt. When I was younger, foot straight, body straight, 90 degrees, pretty much both. Now, tilt to get the foot where I need it to go. So you have to kind of adapt, uh, as I said, as you get older, uh, or as uh, injuries, etc. And you have to adapt to a karate. Um, this is really important. If you think that you can be the same as you were before injury, or maybe when you're in your 60s and thinking you're still in your 20s, uh, unfortunately, you're, you're not kidding yourself because it's a great place to have your mindset in trying to always be that person that you were. But adapt, adapt and change. Okay. When I shattered my left leg um, and was in hospital um, for a long period of time and learning to walk again, I'll be honest, I spent a whole year learning to walk. I was on a, uh, in a wheelchair for three months. Um, I had to adapt. So I learned Bassai Show, one of the uh, uh, higher grade black belt catters. I learned that doing it differently because I couldn't put any weight on my left leg. Okay, The crutches would get in the way and I couldn't put the weight down on that leg or my mind said I couldn't. I could put the weight down on it, but my mind said I couldn't. So I adapted, changed the way that I learned that kata, which has caused me problems ever since. But, you know, um, we have to adapt. So if suddenly you lost one of your four limbs, okay, you would adapt and your karate can continue because I've taught people who are not fully able-bodied and they've been just as good. So we, we have to adapt to different situations. So, but we still have to challenge ourselves. So let's kick to the side from Shizen time. Okay, so knee up, look, kick, thrust, back down. Okay, look, knee up, thrust, back down. Now, balance. Why did the balance go wrong there? Why did the balance go wrong there? Too upright. Hips, let the hips sink down. Look, knee up, kick, back down. Balance, let the hips go. Knee up, kick, back down. Knee up, look. Look. Now, I, I'm sure I'm tilting. I'd imagine some of my instructors will give me some pretty bad feedback on Saturday. Um, but uh, I know this, I feel this myself. So what you feel, okay, is a good thing, 
It's better if some video is used, better if you see yourself in a mirror, okay, and you're able to look at that mirror afterwards or a video of yourself to see where you are going wrong. I've been doing this long enough to know exactly where I'm going wrong and then forever trying to beat that demon, or that nemesis. Okay, so key thing, knee up. Look, push, try to keep your balance. Knee up, look, balance, down. Look, knee up, balance, down. Now you can probably tell that I'm far better with my left leg at kicking than I am with my right leg. Um, bizarrely, it's the left leg that was shattered, okay? But uh, that's always been my predominant side. My left punch, my left leg, by far, I think my strongest and more comfortable, I think, for me. The right side, more difficult, more challenging, but we have to try to maintain balance in our karate. You can't just be left-sided, you can't just be right-sided, you have to try and get balance. So the kick to practice is not the one you're good at, kick to practice is the one you're bad at. Okay, so always gonna have that imbalance, but you need to try to bring it as close as you can, yeah, so they, they almost meet. As, as, and get it as best you can. I, I don't uh, want to pretend that it's possible for everybody, but I think you know meeting that balance is really good. Um, okay, so uh, that's the kick from Shizen Tai, uh, natural starts. Okay, Hachi Dachi, yeah, sorry, Haisuke Dachi, Haisuke Dachi. So once again, we're gonna do Yoko Kogeri Kikomi, so we're gonna do it from the side kick. Okay, side start, sorry. So the difference between the two, how does this work in your brain or my brain? So I said to you before, the Kiyagi is the bang, the big explosion, the bolt of lightning that comes from heaven to earth and just knocks you straight down, okay? So what's a Kikomi like? Well, um, I like the Shinkansen, it's my favorite train. I'm not a train spotter, but I do like trains. That sounds sad, I know, but I do. The Shinkansen is the world's fastest train, okay? And there's different variations of them, etc. And I've been on a number of different ones. And um, it's really big. Like, I mean, it's ridiculously long. Sort of 50 plus carriages is nothing unusual for a Shinkansen, okay? Um, they are almost a, a mile long themselves as a train. Now, if that's traveling at over 300 kilometers per hour, in fact, they go well over that, then, okay, it just keeps pushing. So the, the front engine pulls, the back engine pushes, okay? And that's exactly what Kikomi Geri is. It just keeps going. So you are thrusting. Okay, imagine the back engine of that train washing the rest of it forwards, okay? And the heel of the foot pulling you forwards, pulling your Kikomi to the finish, okay, when you Kime. And you Kime on Kikomi when the heel and knee lock out, okay? So this is a thrust kick. Um, I have a lovely way of demonstrating this with uh, my instructors and they really, really enjoy doing it with me and I miss doing it with them. And that is so I literally, bang, with a double seriato here in the clavicle, which makes them jump out the skin for Kiyagi And then obviously Kikomi Geri hit them in the same place, but with Taisho, palm heel, and I just push them from one side of the dojo to the other. And we don't stop until we hit the wall. And for me, that's great fun, for them less so, but it, I think it shows the juniors how these two kicks are so different. So Kiyagi Geri is the bolt of lightning, Kikomi Geri is definitely the thrust or the pushing kick. Oh, why does someone have to ring me now? I know what, it won't be anybody for me. It will be the father-in-law because he's the only person that ever uses that phone. Excellent, boss, eight yoi. Okay, so back into Kibidachi starts. Okay, remember your room. Um, you shouldn't need any more room for Kokomi Gary, but listen carefully as we do this position. So we step across, again, use your arms for balance. Okay, so I'll do mine as well. So we come across into almost Kozodachi starts again. Remember, last time the knee went up to the direction of travel, this time the knee comes to the front. Then we pivot and we push and back down into Kibidachi. I'm sorry about the camera angle. It's not following me very well. I've not got a gimbal, but I will get one maybe. So here, step across, keep the same height. And now because of that type position, knee here, push and down. And again, remember about leaning forwards, I definitely tilt, yeah. I definitely, as I've got older, I've tilted more. Definitely didn't do it when I was younger, but hey. Step across, knee up, push, and down. Step across, knee up, push, and down. And me. 
Okay, so a couple of tips on this particular kick in, in uh, this particular kick, Kikomi Giri. Just trying to think of the best camera angle to do this. Uh, if I go away from you, if I go away from you, that might make more sense. I can't kick away from me because you won't be able to see this. Uh, but if we think of, let's get to this position here. You can see that, yeah. So this flexion here, this, this needs to stay here. If we come up to kick, this happens. That balance, tilt side, tilt forwards, com complete loss of balance. So what we have to try and do is keep this knee here. And a good reminder is as you cross over, is almost put your other knee behind it. That forces it into the correct position here. And that, that, that flexion here, this flexion, helps you keep your balance better. Okay, bring this knee, ready for kicking. Kick, and back down. To keep this back knee bent. Okay. I'm not sure which is the best angle. So the back knee, flexion, okay, give it at your stance, hands beside, walk away, step across, kick on me, eight more, they turn, kick on me. You can get a nice crack out of the gi with this. Uh, uh, depends on your gi. So my dogi is from Japan, Hirota Karate Gi. I've uh, been wearing this for whew, a long time now. Um, I think I got my first Hirota Karate Gi when I first came back from Japan. So it would have been about 2005, something like that. I ordered it in Japan. So I've um, been wearing them for a long time. They really are the best of the best. Um, and um, I find them super comfortable. They do different weights for different things. I have a really, really super lightweight one, which I take abroad with me when I go abroad. Don't even know it's in my bag. Um, just have my OB. And uh, th th their products are superb, but expensive compared to your box standard dojo gi, which a lot of people just spend 20 pounds on. Um, you're looking at more 190 to 200 pounds for a Hiroto gi. But if you have a good gi, you get a lovely crack with this, with this particular kick. So let's do this a couple of times at real speed, not too fast, not too slow. So uh, I'm going to do it in this position, but you can do it from this position here. Step across, Kigomi Gary, each. Okay, Mote turn. Mote turn. Okay, so the difference between the two one is the snap kick, the other is the thrust kick. So on the left side, Hidari. We have Yoko Geri Kikomi. On the right side, we have Yoko Geri Kiyagi. Plus, Kikomi Geri. Push. Kiyagi Geri. Snap. Now, that was absolutely diabolical, so I'm going to do that again. <laughs> Kikomi Geri. It's. That's okay. A Kiyagi Geri. It's. Let's change them around. Kiyagi Geri. Itch. Kikomi Geri. Itch. Whoa. Better. Oops. Kiyagi Geri. Itch. Kikomi Geri. Itch. Hey, Yame. I'll show you this angle. So try to come down the camera lens. So you're called Gary Kiyagi to start with. Hey, each. Once more. You're called Gary Kiyagi. You're called Gary Kikomi. You're called Gary Kikomi. Oh, lots of balance. Hey, Yami. 
and relax. Okay, shake your legs off. Don't shake them too hard, because if like mine, they're probably gonna drop off. I find this particular sort of lesson where I'm just on my own and it's non-stop, okay? I have no feedback, I have no opportunity for questions um, or anything like that. I find this particularly difficult to do online, um, but I like to challenge myself, so I make myself do these things. Um, and I think it's uh, hopefully gonna be a benefit to, to you to practice these kicks at home. Use a chair, they're really good to help you just take away one of the more difficult elements, okay? And that is the balance part. The balance part just takes time. But if you're able to, to kind of bend these support legs, and I'm over-exaggerating this to kind of emphasize it, but just take the weight out the hips, it really, really does help, okay? Um, and you're gonna have one side better than the other, yeah? Definitely I'm better at left leg kicking, okay, than I am with my right leg. Um, but uh, you, you know, you, you need to find out where you are with, with these particular kicks. So this, this week then in the dojo, we've done my Giri, we've done Mawashi Giri, Yoko Giri Kiyagi, and Yoko Giri Kikomi. So just to quickly demonstrate the four to see the difference between them. Was. Okay, so stepping forward, Gidan Burai, Ich. Okay, so my Giri kick forward, Ich. My washi Gary forwards. Itch. Yeah. Kiagi Gary forwards. Itch. Hey, you can call me Gary Fish. Yeah. Hey, you're me. I'm ready. Boss. Excellent. I hope that's been of some help. Um, if you would like us to do different kicks, okay, so there's kicks uh, we haven't done this evening, like Yushira Washigiri, uh, Yushira Giri, uh, Fumikomi, <laughs> Fumikiri, there's, there's Mikazuka Giri. Oh, actually, there's so many, isn't there? So we could go on with go on with go on, but we can practice these at another time. So um, please remember, if there's something you want to, to practice, then please tell me uh, so I can put this into my lessons for you. Um, I've been doing this since last March. I'm sure that uh, some of you have got bored with it and left me, but um, you know I'm trying to keep it going until we can get back in the dojos, which fingers crossed won't be too soon. Um, just to let you know that on Saturdays, tend to be most Saturday mornings, not every Saturday morning, but the Black Belts and I, um, the senior Black Belts and I, have started to get together on Zoom and have a Black Belt lesson, okay? We start at 10 a.m. and um, I've invited as many people as I can remember in the dojo. <laughs> but probably missed help people, and that's not intentional, I promise you. But if you'd like to join our Black Belt session, okay, you do need to be above 16, okay? I'm really sorry, but I can't have the uh, little junior Black Belts um, in that particular lesson because uh, some of the Black Belts forget that there are juniors in our lesson. So we've always said that we would like 16-year-old and above uh, because these are the Black Belt sessions we normally have within our um, normal dojo time anyway, so we always meet once a month at least as a Udansha, as a Black Belt group. So if you want to join us, then please do uh, on Saturday. Uh, you'll need to contact me for the Zoom link, okay, and you can join our uh, lesson then. Uh, last weekend we did Nijushiho, we did some uh, Kiyomi Ponkumite sets a few weeks ago. I think this week we wanted to do some Nijushiho recap, and we're going to do the Juipon sets. So um, we always try to do something that's for everybody. And to be perfectly honest, it's really, really good for our mental health and as much as our physical health, just to get together as a group. So you do need to be showdown and above, okay? So you do need to be one of our black belts and you do need to be 16 years old and above, okay, to join. Um, uh, I'm sorry that we can't have everybody to join, but uh, we, as I say, um, that's just another opportunity to train with us. Saturday was very successful, the Kangeku. Really, really thoroughly enjoyed myself, had a lot of fun with it. Um, and so what we're going to do is do a course again, possibly in March. Um, okay, I'll let you know more about that spring course uh, because we just don't know what's, when, the, when the dojos will be open again. Um, and that's the plan moving forwards. Uh, Harry, as soon as I get my Lego piece, I will declare my Lego build finished because uh, it hopefully won't take me too long. So I'll hopefully be able to do that with you maybe next week. Keep my fingers crossed for next week. Um, so just going to say hello. Uh, Bit of confidence, so hips, hips, hips. Andy says, yeah, don't forget the knees. Equally important, very much so, yes. 
Yeah, very good. So uh, thank you so much again for joining me this Thursday evening. If you're watching it on uh, catch up or whatever later, then thank you very much for watching us again. Any tips and ideas on any other lessons that you'd like um, within my own dojo that I can teach, then please just, uh, just let me know. Um, keep in touch, please. I'm really, really good to get emails and uh, messages uh, just to see how people are doing um, and how, how they're going. Okay, so uh, I like to keep in touch with people. Okay, finish there. Kyotsuke. And ready? Os. Dojukun. Hitots. Jinkan kan sei ni soromate koto. Hitots. Makato no michio mumoru koto. Hitots. Dorioko no seishi no yashinawa koto. Hitots. Keki no yo imashimoru koto. Hitots. Regyo omoju koto. Hitots. Keki no yo imashimoru koto. Shomuri, ready? And sensei, you ready? Oss. Oss. I think age has got the better of me. I'm sure I did one of those twice in the dojo kun. My apologies. Uh, anyway, good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. See you on Tuesday, black belts. See you on Saturday. Or you soon say the gato gozaimas. Good night. Good night. Oss. 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 See you next week. Jamatane. Jamatane. Oss. See you, Harry.